So we're demoing Intel Remote Wake technology. This computer is currently has three states, it's sleeping. And the when the, the VEC driver has been uh, modified so that it periodically sends a packet to an Intel cloud server. And the Intel cloud server knows that this computer is in a wakeable state. It also has web APIs for developers to be able to remotely send a command to the web API at the Intel server and wake up this machine. So I have a website, it's called MeshCentral.com, it's one of the first websites to be enabled with this technology. And you can currently see this machine as in sleep state. Now I can see you know, for the last seven days what the power state of that machine has been. Now normally, a normal machine, you, when you're sleeping, you're off the network. Mm -hmm. So I would not be able to know what state you're in when you're sleeping. You're just simply off the network. But because of those packets being sent to the Intel network, I can color your machine blue here, knowing that you're in sleep state. Right? If you yank the cable off of the, the NIC, after a while, I won't get any reports. I'll know you're just off the network. Okay. So roughly... So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter um, if you're wireless or wired on, your, on the base machine? Well, we're supporting... Uh, the wired built-in NIC right now, and we're going to support wireless. But you have to use one of our two NICs. If you add a new NIC, obviously that feature will not be supported. Okay. Okay. Now, this website is off on the internet. You can access this website from anywhere, from a phone, in fact, from an iPad, from anywhere you want. And then I can click power action and say, and say wake, and it's going to take a few seconds. In fact, it just woke up right here. So this website, communicated with the Intel server, told them, I want to wake up this machine, and the Intel server sent a packet back and woke it up. Okay, and, then, and this, you have to authenticate that this is yours in the setup? That's right. In the initial setup? Absolutely. Okay. Um, we have a way to do this without Intel being able to identify unique machines to keep your privacy. Every time the machine boots up, it generates a new unique identifier, and that unique identifier has to be communicated back to Mesh Central for Mesh Central to know how to wake up this machine. Okay. But from the Intel uh, server's point of view, it cannot uniquely identify machines, so your privacy is kept. So it will um, now just like Wake on LAN. By the way, Wake on LAN works on a local network only. This is like a cloud version of Wake on LAN, right? Uh, wake on LAN. Does not wake up the screen when you do a remote wake. It's just uh, uh, an Intel remote wake the same. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. But I'm going to go and take a look at the desktop here. And so I, I'm going to take control of the desktop. This is an HTML5 application. So and I'm going to just tap the screen a little bit. And as I tap the screen, you should see the screen just popped up. So I just move the mouse. Got basically it. Basically on the screen. Got it. Just force the screen to turn on. Okay. So so what is once you've now access your your machine remotely right can you do anything you would do normally do if you're sitting in front of it absolutely uh, well once you wake up the machine the third-party software can do anything it wants so in this case of the software uh, yeah I can I can take control of the computer I can uh, let's see, minimize boxes and... okay so I, I guess the, I'm just looking at it from the consumers point of view yes. All right, so we have this technology that allows you to remotely wake it. Right. But what is software that, I mean, so let's just say I want to now access video files when I'm on the road. Absolutely. That are sitting on my hard drive. That's right. So, so what do I use to do that? So you as a developer would probably have some software to do that. Of course, you could use Mesh Central. You know, we license that software separately. Um, but let's suppose you have an, an agent on that machine to do remote calls or remote file access or media access or, or you know, remote computing. Then um, the, the technology only allows you to wake up the machine and send a small message saying why it got woken up. Yeah, so once it's well, now once it's awake, then it, you're then the developer. So, so theoretically, they could integrate some of this functionality into their app. Correct. So they could say, you know, if you're if you're authenticated or whatever by Intel's such or such service, uh -huh. push this button will wake your PC up. Right. Or maybe that happens seamlessly. Absolutely. And then you're able to access whatever you access through your computer app. Exactly. I think most in most cases it will be seamless. Okay. For example, I want to access my pictures from my home PC. I tap the home PC to access the pictures on the application. The application will be enabled with Intel Remote Wake. Turn on the PC a few seconds later, and pictures will pop up. Okay. So if I wanted to access, say, my Access Prime, my Amazon Prime account, right? Okay. Uh -huh. um, see where I could do that on my tablet. Right. Now, normally, Amazon Prime is in the cloud already. 
So you shouldn't have to wake up your Okay, I'm seeing th th things that maybe I had had locally on, on here. That, that's right. So it, it's like having your own personal cloud. You know, okay, if, it's a if, personal if, cloud, and I can use it in the home, out of the home, out of, out of network, or out of outside of the home network. <laughs> and depending on the application I use, I can access files I need, I can play files, I can share files, I can go on my email from here. Absolutely. In my Outlook email, even though this doesn't have Outlook, I can go into Outlook, just theoretically. That's right. Okay. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's endless possibilities. Look, basically, this is an extension of Wake on Land. Wake on Land has been used for years. And when is this, this is, oh, sorry, and is this going to be available with third gen core, fourth gen core, does it matter? So, th this is part of the platform, not the CPU. And it's probably, this is a development research vehicle, but we expect in 2013 to have select platforms. So it doesn't require any particular chipset? Um, it will probably in the, in the future. I mean, it is a hardware change. Okay, so it will require a specific chipset, um, which then of course will dictate which generation of CPUs you can use. Correct, but okay. uh, to be enough. Okay, and so we're, you're targeting 2013 for that. That's right. All right. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, thank you. Thank you. All right.